Hey everybody, Oscar from Missouri here. For all my subscribers, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, I hope you enjoy the content today. So after my last video where I kind of talked about fast track tips, I wanted to uh, maybe uh, go to the next progression of what we probably should talk about on the channel and that's wiring techniques or how to hook up your uh, layout. Um, <clears throat> I'll kind of go over uh, a few things here. Uh, your main bus and uh, the wire and gauge lengths that I'm comfortable with using and why. The terminal wire gauge and lengths. The terminal track locations and your terminal bus. Oh, I'm sorry, your block, terminal block locations. So we'll, we'll talk about those few things and then uh, I'll start to get into how how I hook it up. But the first thing I wanted to go over is uh, the uh, bus. So on the first phase of my layout, I actually hooked up a bus which goes all the way down the entire length of the layout, all the way up to where my power supply is. Then I added two different runoffs, one here goes all the way across and one here, which actually goes all the way across. That allows me to minimize the track wire lengths that attach to each bus. On the second phase, all I really did was just come right down the middle. And again, that will minimize the length of the terminal wire coming from the terminal tracks. And I can actually connect it to the, to the bus. Ideally, I like to have my terminal wires pretty, pretty close to what Lionel uh, hooks up their terminal track to. And that's the uh, 18 gauge and I think all of their lengths are right at 32 inches. Me personally, I like to make the maximum length about 24 inches from the terminal track to the actual main bus. So I know I'm gonna get some gripes about this, but ideally I like to use a 12 gauge wire with these connectors, the push-in connectors to run those as my main bus. One end goes to the power supply, and then the other end will go to these terminal blocks. I use those as a distribution node so that I can also uh, connect the terminal wires, but if I want to make some extensions uh, with the full 12 gauge, I won't lose power. Now. Ideally, I want to keep those anywhere between 25 and 30 feet because if you go over that length, you'll kind of get some uh, uh, loss. I think any, anything over 30 feet, you'll get more than 3% voltage loss. And ideally, you want to keep it above that so that your trains will operate as they were designed to. Okay, so my terminal block mounting strategy is pretty simple actually. It consists of making sure that the terminal block there is approximately 24 to 36 inches from any of the uh, terminal wires. If not, I'll add another terminal block somewhere so that all of them can reach it relatively easy without exceeding the, that 20, my personal preference, which is 24 inches. Now, the terminal clips here actually come with the terminal blocks when you purchase them. I'll have a link provided in the description for you, but ideally what you do is you cut them in half so that a red is <clears throat> on half of the terminal black, it's a terminal block, the black is on the other half. Now, if you look closely, you'll be able to see once you cut it, 
there's a raw edge there. And ideally, you want to put those raw edges on the outside so that on the inside, as you can see, they're insulated and you won't have a short. Right? So, again, make sure you mount that terminal block at least 24, max being 32 inches from all of the terminal wires on the track, and you'll be fine. Testing the track. So before I jump into that, let me say this. If you don't have one of these multimeters, you'd better get one because it will be your best friend as you go through the testing and troubleshooting process. All right, so <clears throat> first thing I, I like to do is park my train probably right there on the edge. And <clears throat> uh, I think in my previous videos, I said I like to space my uh, terminal tracks about eight to 10 pieces apart. But here's where the test comes in. I pull that train all the way up to the edge here with the power turned all the way up. And then I'll hit the horn, ring the bell, put it in forward and reverse. And if I think with Lionel, what I find is that the Bluetooth signal will drop off. The MTH, it'll just go through the uh, shutdown sequence. If e either one of those things happen, you can pretty much tell, hey, that's where that you know uh, terminal track needs to go. So you also do a multimeter test. Make sure that you're seeing those 18 volts come through. Now, if it, either one of those problems happen and or you see lower than the 18 volts, you know that's, that's going to be where you need to put that terminal track. You hook it up, do the test after, afterward, you'll probably find, just like I do every single time, that hey, what I did worked, I don't have those issues anymore, and it's off to the races. You're, you're going to finish up the rest of your layout. So, hey, everybody. I hope what I've provided today was helpful, insightful, and gives you uh, at least a starting point. <clears throat> gives you enough courage to uh, wire up your own layouts. But I'd like to thank everybody again for stopping by, spending time with me, and until next time, enjoy those layouts.